Hi, uh, this is Jaffe. I'm going to give a couple of quick tips on working in large projects with Rhino inside Revit. These projects, even with highly experienced BIM management, setting them up uh, can be pretty sticky when working in just the Revit UI. In this particular project, they are running some quality control routines over a thousand sheets. Uh, if we open up a Revit view, even with this one, being only one discipline, all the links are unloaded. It takes about six or seven seconds just to open the view. At that rate, it would take almost two hours to open up all 1,100 views. Uh, for Rhino inside Revit to gather the elements in this particular view is going to take a similar amount of time frame. In this case, almost five seconds. When running routines like this, we need to read the view similar to opening it by the Revit UI. Granted, we can reduce this time drastically by using filters, which are a complex topic for another day. Uh, this video is just going to focus on the more fundamental grasshopper aspects. Okay, first one. Locking your solver before opening up a definition. Um, I, like we saw there, a middle mouse button lock. You can also go up to the here, to the top, and uh, disable solver. Um, opening up a definition, it's gonna it's gonna keep it from executing. If you would like to execute with the solver on, you can uh, by recomputing. Once again, that's available up here as well. You could also clear. Uh, another way people do this is simply by disabling components. That way, when you uh, enter a definition, they're not gonna not gonna run. A little better way, depending on what you're doing, is to set up a trigger. The trigger can go on multiple components. So if I had several of these, I could trigger, trigger them all at once. And the trigger, when I hit play, is going to run the definition and then immediately disable that component again. Another way we could do this is through a group. Um, so if I can say add view port, add a couple of components, I could group these. Now that would allow me to, so I can name that group, disable, so I could uh, select all components in the group and then turn them off at once or vice versa, turn them on. So really important, as soon as you get into Grasshopper uh, on a large project would be to lock your solver before opening up a uh, random definition or even one of your own that you, you haven't opened it. Know what your Grasshopper file is doing. This might seem a little obvious, but it's, it's worth saying. Uh, anybody who's done a lot of rendering uh, will know that like a, a couple st uh, settings make the difference between a three or four minute render and sitting there for several hours. If you get your ray tracing cranked up, uh, one little one little setting will set you back forever and you'll barely even notice it in the rendering. The same thing applies here. So in this case, uh, we have 1177 sheets and deleting them would require Revit to open up each sheet, delete the element. Uh, doing this 1100 times is gonna take several hours. So knowing that 
your definition is going to execute something that requires uh, opening of a view or um, anything that's not just reading information, uh, such as parameters, uh, it could take a long time. So know exactly what each of your definitions is doing before you open them up uh, without a lock solver. Because just one minor, one minor change um, could mean the difference between waiting a couple hours for it to finish. Okay, number three, uh, minimal elements and branches when creating your definition. So, obviously, if you have 1177 sheets, you don't want to uh, create, uh, start building your definition uh, on that entire entirety of the set. So, we can get a sublist a couple ways, or a subset. Uh, here, uh, the sublist is asking for domain, so we can go from zero. Nine, we can get ten branches. Enable solver. And you can see we're working on much less information. This is going to be manageable. We can we can start doing things. The importance of uh, keeping the branches uh, so you know everything is simplified properly, everything is lining up is critical. Um, so operating on just a couple tree branches is recommended. Tree branches will take uh, some nice simple integers for your, your, your branches like so. So now I could, I could create my entire whatever I'm going to do on these two branches, and that would apply to this grafted 10 items or grafted 1177. Uh, split tree is another option. This requires a little more syntax, but it gives you also a little more flexibility and a little more power in, in creating which trees you're trying to get. Uh, another Real one is uh, just doing a list item. So maybe I need, I don't know what parameter I want to do. Um, so I need to go ahead and do a little quick search from those parameters. So I'm just going to do a list item on this flat list, get the first element, get its 95 parameters, element parameter, get the values of those, figure out which ones I need, figure out its name, what kind of, um, what kind of, if it needs an integer, text, whatever, and then create my definition. That way I'm not uh, working on the entire, entire set of objects. All right, the next one is related to four. Uh, it's being able to regenerate a list. So one of the issues with creating big spaghetti definitions is that people, they want to keep the order uh, of the list that they're working on. And so they got to keep going downstream, downstream, because they're dependent on that. But there are a couple strategies for uh, linking grasshopper files together. Um, so in this one, I was testing our element visibility component, um, which gives you, um, so I can give it an element. In this case, I was giving it all the elements and all these categories in the whole project and seeing if it was visible on a sheet. This was taking a, almost three hours to run. Um, 
it did run successfully and came up with 81 sheets that didn't have anything on. Uh, so, a couple of ways to do this. Here, I just fed it into a text component, internalized the data, and then use that to rename sheets um, in a different file. Uh, another strategy here, let me turn this on, uh, would be to read it, to save an actual text file. So any of these can be streamed. So you could set a stream definition and save the context uh, content, and then re-reference that uh, read with the read file. That's a little bit. That's a well, <clears throat> One way to do it, uh, it's a little bit uh, restricted, as in this is good for text and stuff. Another option is data input and data output. These will save a, uh, a whole list of, of elements that you can then re-reference, picking the destination in an alternate file. So this is definitely, uh, would, would keep it a little bit more live and uh, as an alternative to just internalizing, copy and pasting that over. As you can see, I, I forgot to lock my solver between switching. So to recap, regener re regenerating lists, uh, easy way is to just internalize some text, bring in a new file. Uh, you can output with the data output input, and you could use the uh, stream data source. Another way you could do this is um, by adding parameters to your Revit, Revit elements, or uh, that you could quickly re-reference um, either by a filter or uh, just by sorting by that parameter. Okay, and the last one is uh, just knowing that your undo is really quick, as well as control alt delete isn't going to harm anything. Um, on this one, I forgot to lock my solver. I don't know. I, I closed this file, so it's just opening the next in line. I don't even know what it's doing. Um, I can do a control alt delete, kill the Revit process, reopen it. Granted, if you're in a very large project with all the links going in and if the bin management wasn't quite up to snuff, you're going to have uh, a long opening time. I'm fortunate on this one. Uh, it was set up properly, and I can go open it up in a minute or two. Uh, so that's not the best option for everybody, but it is an option. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, Control deleted uh, tons of Revit files and never had any issues. Okay, I'm back. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is the undo. So, say I'm working on my my sheet here, deleting a couple of legends. The uh, and I just realized that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, you can always go back into Revit and undo that last uh, execution. Uh, even if it's one of those two or three hour ones, it's almost instantaneous on the undo. Uh, and then we're back where we started. 
So another uh, good one to remember is that yes, if it takes several hours, you can always just undo it in seconds. Okay, I hope that helps. As always, please check out our Final Tide Revit guide for details. Feel free to ask any questions you want, uh, either posting on the forum, email me personally, uh, either via the forum messaging or at jappy.com. Thank you.